Titans fans are tired of Terry Robisky. There has even been a petition going around calling for his job. But have you ever thought about who should replace Terry Robisky? That's what I'm here to answer. I have a list of realistic and fan service guys, candidates, who could fill this void left by Terry Robisky once he gets fired. And that's if he gets fired. There is no confirmation either way yet. But before we jump into that, check the description box, guys. There is a lot of good links in there. You can follow me on Twitter there if you want. Also, you can check out some articles if you like to read from All Out Sports Network. A lot of great writers there. Ryan Moreland writes there. I'll have one of his articles in the description box as well. He's the host of Two Tone Uncensored. I'm actually joining his podcast this week to talk about the Tennessee Titans and what they need to do to win against the Kansas City Chiefs. So you can check that out whether you're going to actually catch it this week or whenever you see this video, you can check the description box to see the date of when it was uploaded. So, um... Let's go ahead and jump into this topic. Now there's a lot of fans who are even calling for the job of Mike Malarkey, which is kind of ludicrous to me. They're, they're calling for his job. They was hoping that we would miss the playoffs just so he could get fired, which it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand why you would want, want to lose just to get a coach fired. It just doesn't make sense to me at all. But Terry Robisky is the main culprit, the main problem. Mike Malarkey isn't going anywhere, and there's a couple of reasons why. One, he's only got one year left on his contract after this season. Two, he's cheap. And three, the team still owes Ken Wisenhut a lot, a lot of money. So Mike Malarkey isn't going anywhere, but that doesn't mean his staff is safe. So let's look at Terry Robisky's career, and then we'll jump into the guys who could potentially rep replace Robisky if he gets fired. Robisky was a running back in the NFL for the Oakland Raiders, or no, I think it was the LA Raiders. Let me look here real quick. Well, he was with the Oakland Raiders from 77 to 79, and then he played for the Miami Dolphins from 80 and 81 as a running back. As an NFL coach, he's mainly been position coach, specifically wide receivers, that's what he coached while he was at Atlanta before he came here, but he's also coached wide receivers with the Dolphins and with the Rams and with the Browns. He's only been an offensive coordinator for the Raiders, which was the Los Angeles Raiders, by the way. I'm looking at it right here on my phone now. Uh, the Raiders, the Browns, and the Titans are the only actual uh, coordinator job that he's actually ever had. Uh, I guess he hasn't made much of his opportunities because he's coached in a lot of places. A lot of different positions, mostly wide receivers and tight ends. He's coached tight ends as well and maybe running backs for a few teams. He was a running back coach for the Raiders before he became a coordinator, but he hasn't made the most of his opportunities as a running back coach or as an offensive coordinator, I should say. So um, he's here in Tennessee. And what is our problem with him? Well, for one, the play calling is terrible. It is awful. I actually got a video. I'll link it to the end of this one talking about an interview he had where he basically made himself look really dumb talking about how good play callers do this and good player callers do this, but I do this. So, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, let that, I'll let you decide that. I'll leave a link to that interview as well as the video I did about it. Well, the video I did about it has a link to the interview in it, so I'll leave that link to the end of this video so you can check it out for yourself if you like. So, one, the play calling is just terrible. For two, the team has regret, regressed which is not entirely his fault. At some point, the players have to take responsibility and the players have to make plays, but you also gotta look at teams have watched us for a year now. Last year, we was a brand new team. Nobody knew what to expect from us. Uh, they knew what we were saying we was gonna do, what we wanted to do, but they didn't know exactly what that looked like. This year, they knew what it looked like and what we was going to try to do, as well as we had some injuries. DeMarco has been playing hurt just about all year. Uh, Marcus is kind of regressed and it's his mechanics and I think it has something to do with his confidence from where he broke his leg. But these last two games, he's played good. He did throw an interception against the Rams, but other than that, he's had two really good games back to back and he's picking up steam at the perfect time because we're going to be playing in the playoffs this weekend, so really excited about that. I had the flu whenever this game was going on and even with the flu, I was laying down sick and watching the game. and. There's a couple of times where I was like, yes, you know, real loud, and uh, then I'd be like, oh. <laughs> so that, I did do that a couple of times, but 
for the most part, even with the flu, after we won that game, I felt like a huge, just gigantic weight was lifted off my shoulders. I felt light as a feather after that win. But anyways, anyways let's get back to topic. So the team has regressed. Uh, the play calling is terrible. That's the two main things that the Titan, that Titans fans have issues with when it comes to Terry Robisky because we're just not performing to the level that we should be performing at. And while you do got to hold the players accountable and have the players make plays, you also got to look at the play caller and say, hey, this is not working. This is not working. We're not doing this very well. How can we fix this? And that's just not being done. It's just like we're beating our head against the wall. We're beating a dead horse. We're doing stuff that doesn't work over and over and over again and hoping that it does work. And finally, we've gotten to a groove. We've gotten to a rhythm. But uh, throughout the season, this really could have cost us. There was a lot of close games that we could have just, just as easily lost that we won. So let's talk about some guys who could replace Terry Robisky. And I'm going to start out with what I call the fan service guys because these are the guys who are highly unlikely to get. Not outside the realm of possibility. They, you're not going to see Josh McDaniels, who's a, a really hot commodity for a head coach right now on this list for our coordinator job. You're not going to see someone like Jim Harbaugh, who's happy where he's at there at Michigan, who's reluctant to come back to the NFL to be a head coach, come back to be our offensive coordinator. So I'm not going outside the realm of realist, realistic it realist real i'm not going out the realistic realm realm sorry i got tongue tied there so i'm not going to go out that far but these guys are a long shot and they don't really have any ties to our team so number one is bruce arians and like i said this is a long shot he's decided to retire he decided to walk away from the arizona cardinals they was going to fire him but he decided to walk away under his own power uh, let's look back at some of the things he's done in the past. He's coached various positions. He's been a running back coach. Uh, he's been a wide receiver coach. He did both of those at Mississippi State, by the way. Running back coach at Alabama. Running back coach for the Chiefs. Saints tight end coach. Colts quarterback coach. And that was when they had Peyton Manning, by the way. Uh, Steelers wide receivers coach. He's also had coordinator jobs. He's an offensive coordinator at Mississippi State. Uh, he was the offensive coordinator in Alabama, the offensive coordinator for the Browns, offensive coordinator slash interim head coach whenever um, Chuck Pagano got diagnosed with cancer there for a while for the Colts, and he actually went 9-3 and three with the Colts while Chuck Pagano was out. And most notably is his head coaching job here at Arizona, and he's also been a head coach at Temple. So he's a good coach. He, this would be the perfect coach for us to get because, one, it's, he's got experience coaching quarterbacks. He knows how to coach a quarterback. Marcus Martin. That you're going to see that kind of uh, you're going to see that kind of uh, trend or uh, pattern. Looking at these guys, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking at one, somebody who's going to come in and help Marcus Mariota right away, and two, someone who's who's going to know how to get the best out of our running backs and know how to call plays and be and for us to be able to do what we want to do week in and week out. Bruce Arian seems to be the perfect fit for that because he's got experience coaching quarterbacks and running backs. He's basically coached everywhere and he's been successful. So would we be able to get him out of retirement to come coach for us? Very, 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 very doubtful. But he does have a connection. There is one connection between us and him and that is Russ Grimm. Russ Grimm coached under him for I think it was a year before he retired with the Arizona Cardinals. So um, that is one connection we have to Bruce Arians, but like I said, that is a long shot. Uh, I feel like he would be great for not only Marcus Mariota, he'd be great for Derrick Henry, uh, DeMarco Murray if he comes back, and any other running backs that we have, as well as our wide receivers, Corey Davis. I feel like he'd be able to get the best out of Corey Davis as well, and as well as Taewon Taylor and uh, Jonu Smith. He'd be able to coach some young guys up. That's really what we need, someone who's going to. Uh, get the young guys at the level of play that we need them to be at. So that's one. Number two is Jim Bob Cooter. And I was kind of on the fence on whether I wanted to put him in the realistic category or the fan service category. I ended up putting him in the uh, fan service category because he doesn't have any connections to this team. He does have one, and that is that he is from Tennessee. And Tennessee does have that um, hometown mentality just a little bit. Nothing too much, nothing too crazy. We're not a sentimental football team. You've seen that from the Jason McCourty deal and the Michael Griffin deal. So we are not a sentimental football team. So this is a long shot as well. 
He's mainly coach quarterbacks. He was a quarterback coach for the Lions before he became the offensive coordinator. Uh, I think he was a wide receivers coach as well. Let me look here. I got it all in my notes. I got a whole note. My phone is full of these guys. Um, he was a quarterback coach for the Broncos, the Colts, and the Chiefs, and quarterback coach slash offensive coordinator for the Lions. Um, one thing you can say about him is he knows how to coach quarterbacks. That is very good. Uh, he knows how to coach wide receivers. He's taken some, I would call uh, the wide receivers they have in Detroit just slightly above average. I wouldn't call them great or elite by no means, but they're slightly above average, pretty good. And he's making them play much better than their talent talent level, so that is good. So he would be good for Corey Davis and Taewon Taylor and all them too. The downside to him is he doesn't, he doesn't have much luck coaching the running back position. You see they struggle in Detroit with a running game. And the offensive line is very inconsistent. So if we was to get him, it would be good. So um, that's that's a good thing for Mariota, bad thing for the offensive line, but we still got Russ Grimm, so it'd all be all right. Next on our list is somebody I was also a little bit split on. I didn't know if I wanted to put him in the realistic category or the fan service category. Same reason for Jim Bob Cooter. He is from Tennessee. It is T. Martin. He's a former quarterback in the NFL. And he also played in the German Football League. And he was actually drafted before Tom Brady by the Steelers in that draft. You see how that worked out. You know, everybody knows how that worked out. Tom Brady went the sixth round as arguably the best quarterback in the NFL. This guy was drafted ahead of him. Didn't quite work out. But he's been coaching at the college level. He's been coaching quarterbacks and as an offensive coordinator. He's currently the offensive coordinator of the USC Trojans where Sam Darnold is at. Uh, he's been discussed for head coaching jobs in the college level, and he's very firm about that. That he doesn't want to, uh, he doesn't want to leave USC unless it's for a head coaching job. But maybe he would to coach at the next level. Who knows? And you might could send some feelers out there and find out. But uh, I doubt that. It still seems like a long shot to me. When um, the Tennessee Vols was looking for somebody, his name was floated out there. They tried to get him to come over to be an offensive coordinator. And he made it very clear that he was not leaving unless they was going to offer him the head coaching job. That didn't happen. But I feel like given his experience as, as a quarterback in the league, uh, as a quarterback throughout college, as a quarterback coach, as an offensive coordinator, he would be good for Marcus Mariota. Whether or not his style of play or his style of coaching would work for us, I don't know. I can't tell you that. I haven't seen or heard enough of this guy to really know to be able to tell you. So moving on. Next on the list is the coach from UCF, the offensive coordinator. He was a wide receivers coach and an offensive coordinator, and that's kind of what Terry Robisky is for the Titans. But hear me out on this. This is a long shot because we don't have any connections to him, and he is coming from a small school. But this school shattered their records this year. They broke school record by scoring 73 points in a game. Uh, they scored more than 60 points in a game four times this season. They scored more than 50 points in a game five times this season. This season, uh, They've converted in the red zone 91% of the time. They ranked 37th in all of college football in turnovers. They only threw nine interceptions. And those are the two big things I look at for the Titans. This guy is going to help us stop turning the football over, and he would help us convert in the red zone, and that is really, really, really what we need. I feel like he would be good for Marcus Mariota. I feel like he's a good technique coach. Uh, this school, this team is a small school. It's a small school team. It's the University of Central Florida, and they just beat Auburn in the Peach Bowl. They're competing with and beating bigger, better schools than what they technically are. Uh, they had a, a whole roster full of award winners this season, so I feel like this guy could come in and get the most out of the talent we have, and we have a lot of talent. That this kind, this guy kind of gives me the feel of. Um, he can take an average team and make them really good. The Titans are a really good team. I feel like he can make them great. He, his coaching style kind of gives me the feels that he knows how to get the very best out of the players he's got. So let's move on and look at some of the guys on our realistic list. And we'll start out with somebody in-house. And that is Russ Grimm. Russ Grimm is a four-time Super Bowl winner, four-time Pro Bowler, and four-time All-American, first-team first All-American. So that is really great. He's a Hall of Fame player. He's had consideration for head coaching jobs. He was in consideration for the Jets job when Todd Bowles got it. 
He was in consideration for the Arizona Cardinals job when Bruce Arians got it. He's been an offensive line coach for the Redskins, the Steelers, the Cardinals, and us. You look at our offensive line in 2015, it was awful. It was one of the very worst in the league. His first year, which was last year, 20, well, two years ago now, it's 2018, but 2016, we was arguably the best in the league. And yes, we have regressed this year, but like I said, that's some, uh, some on the part of the player's responsibility for not making the plays. And some of it is because teams have seen us for a year. They know what we're all about. They know what we're going to try to do. They're constantly, constantly, constantly stacking the box on us. But we want to build a big, strong, smash-mouth football team. And who better to be calling the plays than a big, strong, smash-mouth football coach, which is an offensive line coach. I feel like he would be a great play caller in the style of football that we want to play. Um, not only that, you look at uh, some of the guys he used to play with. Some of his former teammates have said that Russ Grimm is the smartest guy they have ever played with. They even say that he's smarter than some of the quarterbacks that they have played with, which is very impressive to me. They say that his awareness level is on another level. He always knows what's going on. He always knows the position and the situation that his team is in, and that's very impressive for an offensive lineman to do. He played quarterback at the high school level, and then uh, they come to recruit him, and they looked at him as a quarterback. They said, no, son, you're going to play offensive lineman. So they converted him to an offensive lineman in college, but he continued to be the emergency quarterback throughout college, and then he continued to be the emergency quarterback throughout his NFL career. So that's someone who is in-house, who I feel like will make a better offensive coordinator than what we got now. Moving on, Marcus Arroyo, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Originally, this guy was in my fan service side of the list, but after the way I found the guys who I found would be more realistic is I looked at people who J-Rob has connection to and guys that Mike Malarkey has connections to, and those guys got put in the realistic list. Originally, Mark Arroyo was someone I was looking at because of what uh, Oregon's quarterback is doing, so I was looking at him. And then I went to, and then whenever I flipped over to look for realistic guys, and I started looking further into John Robinson's background, I noticed that these two guys actually have a connection. Uh, this guy, Marcus Arroyo, was the quarterback coach of Tampa Bay in 2014 while John Robinson was there. So we know he's a quarterback coach, he's a good quarterback coach. Look what Oregon's freshman quarterback is doing this year. He is tearing teams up, and it's so impressive to watch. So this guy's gonna be a good quarterback coach, he's gonna be good for Marcus, but not only that, you look on the flip side of things, just like Bruce Arians, this guy's a running back coach as well. He coached the running backs at Oklahoma State. They went from averaging 3.6 yards a game, I believe, in 2015 to um, 4.2 yards a carry in 2016 when he took over as a running back coach. They went from averaging 126 yards a game uh, the year before he took over and then uh, 170 yards per game the next year when he actually took over. So. He's going to be good for Marcus and good for our running back. So I really like that. Uh, that would be a great get for us if we could get him in as our offensive coordinator because he's going to be good at the two positions that we really need to focus, that our game is really centered around. He's going to be a good candidate to coach both of those positions. So let's look at the next guy on our realistic list. The next guy is Tom Clements. He was the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills while Mike Malarkey was their head coach. They finished 9-7. and seven. Mike Malarkey got fired. This guy had to move on. But look at the talent that the Buffalo Bills had, had back then and compare it to what we have now. They had two notable players back then on the Buffalo Bills roster, and that was Willis McGahee at running back and uh, Jason Peters at tackle. And Jason Peters is only 23 years old that, back then. He's only been in the league for a year, maybe two at the very most. So, And not only that, they had to play Tom Brady twice a year in the prime of his career. So nine and seven seems like a really good finish to me. And then after he coached with the Buffalo Bills, he went on and he was a quarterback coach for the Saints, quarterback coach for the Chiefs, quarterback coach for the Steelers, uh, quarterback coach for the Packers, for Aaron Rodgers. He was a quarterback coach there from 2006 to 2011. That's when they won the Super Bowl was 2011. Then he took over as the offensive coordinator there. Um, currently, 
I think he's out of football currently, to be honest with you. I think he actually retired, but Mike Malarkey might be able to get him out of retirement. So this guy, I feel like will be very, very good for Marcus Mariota. Uh, he played in the Canadian Football League and he was dynamic there. He was a seven-time All-Pro in Canadian football, uh, four-time champion, whatever their championship is. I don't know, like ours is Super Bowl. I don't know what their, theirs is, but he was a four-time champion thing there. Seven times All-Pro, really good quarterback in Canadian football. He's going to know how to get the best out of Marcus Mariota. I feel like that would be a good get. Not only that, he's got experience working with some very good quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers, for instance. The the Saints hadn't what didn't have Drew Brees at the time he was the quarterback coach there. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But let's look at the next guy and move on. The next guy is Greg Olson, not the tight end, the coach. And he was the assistant head coach slash quarterback coach in Jacksonville while Mike Malarkey was the head coach there. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, no. No. That, that's all. But hear me out. Just give me a chance to explain. This guy's been a quarterback coach for a lot of different teams. Uh, he's been a quarterback coach for the uh, Purdue uh, 49ers and Chicago's Bears. He's been a, a offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach for the Detroit Lions, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been an offensive coordinator for the Jaguars, the Raiders, the Rams, and Central Washington. Um, Currently, what he's doing now is uh, this is really what's going to sell you on him. This is really what's going to make the difference. Currently, he is the quarterback coach for Jared Goff. This is his first year there coaching Jared Goff. And you look what Jared Goff did. He went from awful, terrible, arguably the worst quarterback in the league last year to just dynamic, one of the best in the league this year. Like, I don't know, somebody had him just flipped a switch or something. I don't know. And while a lot of that is on Sean McVay for doing such a great job, this guy is, plays a big part in that too. And he would be good for Marcus Mariota as well. He does have a connection to Mike Malarkey, and that is a possibility. Uh, that's why he is on the realistic list. Now we got one more, so let's uh, wrap this up. Let me. It is Terry Shea. He was with Mike Malarkey while Malarkey was in Miami. This guy has head coaching experience. Um, he has uh, college coaching experience and Canadian football coaching experience. Uh, most notably, he was the head coach for Rutgers. Uh, he was the offensive coordinator for the Bears, the University of California, and San Jose State. He's been a co quarterback coach for the Rams, the Dolphins, and the Bears. So this is another guy I feel like is good for Mariota. And like I said in this list, you're going to see the trend of these coaches. I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at somebody who's going to be good for Mariota. I'm looking at somebody who's going to be good for our running backs, and the perfect candidate would be good for both of those guys. So really, the guy that you should really, really want to be our offensive coordinator next year, out of all of these guys, I would say it would have to be uh, Marcus Arroyo. He would have to be the guy. He's good for quarterbacks, and he's good for running backs, and that is what our whole team is built around. That is what our whole team is centered around. So really, that should be the guy you want. But anyways, comment and let me know who you want to see as our offensive coordinator. And um, let me know why. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Tighten up this weekend when we play the Chiefs. And have a great day, guys.